is devoted for that purpose. So the last talk of this uh, afternoon session on quantum information will be given by Glenn Began Bang from the University of Innsbruck. And uh, yeah, there is Professor Wage who's raising the end. Um, does he have? Does he want to say something? I'm going to another meeting. So okay, okay, okay. So we we'll get the last talk from uh, Glenn Began Bank right now. So whenever you are ready, you can start uh, oh. your talk. Okay, I'm ready. Um, can you see the slides? Yes, we can see your slides. There is, uh, There's just some object on the right that's covering your a bit of your slides. It's like the 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 palette, the paint palette. The paint palette. Yeah, it's it says colori on the on the right. Oh, I don't see it. So let me see if I can. Uh, that's a bit of an issue because I don't see this object. Let, let me try. Okay. Again. So let me try to again. So. Mm. Yeah, it's it's on the right there in, the, in your right corner. Yeah. Um, uh, oh. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Close that, and that'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So uh, thank you for the uh, to the organizer for the possibility to talk, and thank you for the very organizing this very nice conference. And uh, I'll be talking about the problem. I'll be about the problem of uh, uh, finding the ground state given a certain Hamiltonian. This is uh, closely related to what Estelle discussed before, and uh, this kind of problem in general can be solved using both quantum and classical resources. So uh, solving this kind of problem would have various application in various branches of science, such as quantum chemistry, computer science, machine learning, and physics. And uh, various groups have already started uh, using quantum device to, uh, to tackle at least small instances of relevant problems. So one of the standard approaches to um, find the ground state of a given Hamiltonian is uh, uh, via quantum annealing. So in this case, one takes the target Hamiltonian, and here we, for the rest of the talk, we will assume that uh, uh, we are working on a Hilbert space of uh, uh, spin one half. So next, uh, uh, one adds an auxiliary Hamiltonian to generate uh, a driving term, which is a composition of the two Hamiltonians, and they are interpolated via a schedule S of t. And this schedule interpolates from time zero, where the uh, Hamiltonian is the initial driving Hamiltonian, to the final time where the Hamiltonian is the target Hamiltonian. And the system is let to evolve under, the, under this uh, uh, time-dependent Hamiltonian, and we collect the final state. So according to the adiabatic theorem, if the evolution is slow enough, the system will move slowly from the ground state of the initial Hamiltonian to the ground state of the target Hamiltonian. So this is convenient because the ground state of the initial Hamiltonian is usually easy to prepare. But there is a caveat. So the evolution in particular has to be extremely slow or, sl or slower, where uh, the uh, spectral gap of the Hamiltonian, uh, of the evolution Hamiltonian uh, vanishes or uh, it's uh, close to zero. So this poses an issue that uh, it's difficult to um, choose correctly the schedule uh, S of t because uh, we do not know where we have to slow down because we don't have the knowledge of where the vanishing gap is. And uh, usually the standard choice is using a linear schedule for, for or uh, any other uh, guess, but uh, these are simple choices, but not optimal. And uh, um, in general, it's a problem to, under, uh, to obtain optimal schedules without having information of the, about the spectrum of the problem. So uh, here, I will consider this problem and uh, we tackle this problem from, uh, uh, by first digitalize, uh, 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 discretizing the, the continuous schedule. So we, using discretization, the schedule becomes uh, instead of a continuous function, a stair function. 
and uh, this leads to uh, the following uh, the following uh, state, which is uh, obtained applying uh, fixed Hamiltonians for uh, certain steps. So now uh, the schedule becomes. Uh, uh, instead of a continuous function, we have only a, a set of two p parameters where p is the number of steps that we have used for the discretization. So the problem can be further uh, digitalized by using a trotter decomposition. In this case, one, apply, one decomposes the single evolution uh, operator of each step in uh, two parts, one for each of the Hamiltonians involved in the, in the quantum annealing algorithm. And uh, essentially, according to the trotter decomposition, one can uh, instead apply these uh, Hamiltonians individually for a certain lag of time. So in the, in, the, in the language of the schedules that I introduced before, this is equivalent to applying a schedule which is, uh, has only values uh, one and zero, which is called bang-bang sch schedule usually. And uh, the, uh, the, the time lags which, uh, for which the system, uh, for which the Hamiltonian is hx or hz, are, are now what parameterize the schedule. So now the problem of uh, optimizing the schedule is uh, a problem of optimizing these parameters. And uh, this, uh, this criticization is uh, also convenient because uh, the schedule, such schedules can then be applied easily and studied easily on uh, digital hardware, quantum hardware. And uh, usually they involved uh, an application of few qubit gates. So, uh, the, so then when we have, uh, so to optimize these parameters uh, in 2014, uh, Fari proposed uh, uh, an algorithm called quantum approximate optimization algorithm in which uh, you take the state you would obtain. So this is the, the, what is written here is the general state you obtain when you apply the gates prescribe the retorted decomposition, but now the parameters uh, we use, uh, gamma and beta, are free. And uh, we use uh, a classical algorithm to, to optimize them. Essentially, we uh, apply, we create the state corresponding to uh, a given set of variational parameters using a quantum device, then we measure the expectation value of the energy. And with the classical optimization algorithm, we minimize its expectation values. This results uh, in uh, optimal values for the parameters, which uh, uh, results in a schedule which, is which gives a state close to the ground, to the desired ground state. So this is, a a good, this is a technically a good technique to optimize uh, the variational parameters. And uh, indeed, uh, what happens is that the, Q the QA ansatz um, is uh, powerful enough to describe uh, actually optimal solutions. So the solution, this uh, uh, optimal solution can always be written in terms of these bank, bank schedules. However, uh, these bank, bank schedules are usually very rough and irregular and uh, it, it is not clear whether uh, uh, you would recover something similar to the uh, schedule you uh, started from when digitalizing. So in, this, in the first part of the talk, I'll discuss uh, uh, how to obtain uh, a technique to obtain these schedules via uh, an iterative optimization of the QA algorithm. And uh, this leads to, when applicable, applicable leads to uh, an efficient search of these parameters. So it's convenient to use it if possible. So uh, I'll start by discussing uh, the transverse, uh, uh, is in ch transverse field is in chain. So this model has already been touched by Estelle in the previous talk, and it's uh, particularly convenient to benchmark and uh, study, uh, for initial benchmark and studies of uh, algorithms. Later on in the talk, I'll discuss other uh, possible generalization for other models. So, uh, the transfer field is in chain, it's essentially a ring where the spins are connected uh, uh, and interact and here with an equal coupling. And here we want to find the ground state of HZ written here in, uh, in red. And uh, again, we use the algorithm I described before and we introduce uh, the, the auxiliary Hamiltonian. 
So in general, we can look for a general target for uh, which is, uh, uh, we can look for the ground set of a general target, which is has, uh, uh, which is the composition of both the driving Hamiltonian And the, uh, and the uh, when we apply the uh, QA algorithm and uh, or with minority schedule, it's good to have in mind uh, a parameter that can tell us how good is the schedule. So we consider the rescaled residual energy here written, which essentially it's zero when we have achieved uh, exactly the ground state and one when we are maximally far from the ground state in energy. So when this parameter goes to zero, the algorithm is working correctly. So uh, one, uh, we, we use uh, an iterative, we propose an iterative construction for these schedules in, uh, and uh, we test it on this problem. So we start from uh, a low value of, of, uh, the, of steps. So here P is equal to, and we start from the uh, so-called linear, so linear schedule here in gray. Then we optimize the parameters and uh, Again, I should mention that uh, we can invert between relation between the parameters gamma and beta to obtain uh, a schedule S as we did uh, while digitalizing. So uh, we obtain these parameters and uh, we get the optimal. And here the optimal are the blue squares. Then we go to uh, a higher value of P and we start from uh, a, a solution which is given by interpolating the solution, the, the parameters we got at P equal to. So here you see this uh, uh, blue la dashed line interpolates the previous solution and we optimize starting from this point and we find the uh, orange curve. And then uh, we uh, can proceed again iteratively to p equal eight and uh, uh, for higher values p. So what we see is that uh, uh, in doing this uh, local minimal search, the schedule is uh, uh, assuming the it's uh, taking the shape where uh, it's for it's getting flatter and slow uh, where the gap where the gap is closing. So for this problem, there is a vanishing gap here in the middle, and uh, uh, the problem. So the, the, the algorithm actually is able to find where the gap is and uh, is construct this uh, optimal schedule without a priori having information about where the gap was located or, or how, uh, or any spectral information about the problem. So, um, so well, it is interesting to uh, study the performance of such uh, an uh, optimization scheme for the schedule. And uh, we compare it with uh, in optimizing uh, the parameters gamma and beta when starting from a naive random initialization. And uh, we find here, we study the number of iterations the, the classical algorithm needs to find uh, the optimal. Uh, and with the random initialization, it scale, scales all the square of the depth of the circuit, while with uh, uh, an iterative optimization that we just described, it squares as a square root. So there is a quartic speed up when using this kind of algorithm in efficiency and a more efficient search for these parameters. And then the parameters, we look at uh, the parameters we obtain, so the quality of the mm, of the state we obtain with the final parameters, and this can be can be studied with uh, the residual energy that we introduced before, and uh, we compare this uh, how the, these parameters with the parameters obtained via the usual standard linear uh, uh, digitized quantum annealing, and in this case we find that uh, the linear standard digitized quantum annealing scales as. Uh, uh, one over as a scale as one over the square root of uh, the computational resources while uh, our uh, uh, or the depth of the circuit while our uh, uh, while this uh, solution instead scales as one over uh, the depth of the circuit so there is again there is a quadratic uh, improvement also within the precision of the final state uh, obtained with the algorithm with respect to the, the linear digitized uh, quantum annealing. So um, 
so uh, as I described, the, this uh, approach is quite uh, convenient and uh, uh, can lead to an efficient search. However, we found, and I'll discuss later, that is not always applicable and cannot be used for all problems. So to generalize, to tackle more general Hamiltonians, we try to study uh, the problem using uh, uh, reinforcement learning to optimize these uh, schedules. So we view the, uh, Q, the QAA schedule optimization as a uh, reinforcement, as a learning process where we have an agent who can apply these uh, gates we described and then measure the states. So the, so the agent uh, applies the gates, measure the states, and then decides what to do based on what it's measured. So the policy, uh, it's uh, what the what uh, it's a set of rules that the agent uses to decide what to do based on what is measured, and uh, in this case uh, uh, there are like uh, I don't have time to describe, but there are standard uh, uh, algorithms uh, in uh, machine learning uh, which uh, allow you to train efficiently uh, an agent. So. Uh, a, a, let's say a, a, an artificial intelligence will take the best choices uh, uh, for this uh, for this kind of problem. So the agent will uh, at the end of the training, which uh, would last uh, a certain number of epochs, so a certain number of time where we repeat this process for him to learn, will learn uh, a policy and will then try to apply this policy to find the to find the parameters. Uh, uh, gamma and beta. So in this case, we have to specify for uh, the problem which observables we give the agent. So what is his input or how he decides uh, what to do. And uh, we use as observables the expectation values of the uh, uh, Hamiltonian involved in the QOA uh, answers. So one technicality, which uh, it's important, uh, is that this uh, approach uh, requires uh, an extra number of measurement because it requires also intermediate measurement during uh, do, to, for the agent to, uh, to decide the next move. You have five more minutes, Claire. Yes, thank you. So uh, we look again uh, with this approach at uh, the transverse easing chain. And uh, what we see is that uh, by training the, the agent for more time, so here you see the first panel, it's uh, a system where the agent has been trained for 100, more or less 100 epochs and the second for 1,000. And here the, the, the blue lines and the red lines correspond to uh, reinforcement learning solution obtained for the schedule, a reinforcement learning solution obtained plus a local optimization. So the iterative solution, which is the square, which are the square, which are the squares, are uh, recovered by the reinforcement learning by the reinforcement learning agent in this problem. And next, we consider the fully connected uh, 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 spin model. So where now all the spins are connected. So from uh, a point of view of uh, uh, physically, if this model has uh, long range interaction and uh, uh, somehow we find that it's more complicated for the, uh, for, uh, to optimize the parameters in this kind of model. So indeed, uh, the one can show that uh, the iterative optimization does not perform well in this model. And uh, one has to resort to other kind of uh, initialization of the parameters. In this case, we just used uh, a random initialization again, which is the blue line and uh, an initialization from the linear digital uh, uh, parameters, which is the orange line. So uh, we apply to this uh, problem, again, reinforcement learning, okay? And uh, we see that uh, uh, contrary to the, what happens with the iterative optimization, reinforcement learning is still able to improve the solution of the problem and to find uh, the optimal, uh, optimal smooth schedule for, uh, for the parameter S of M which are convenient because then they can be, for this, you can invert the digitalization process. 
So uh, I'll just uh, uh, so summarize what I've discussed. I've discussed uh, two possible ways of uh, optimizing uh, optimizing schedules. Uh, we digitize schedules. One is uh, it, uh, an iterative optimization of the schedules, which uh, provides an efficient search. But however, we find that it fails for uh, a certain class of problems. And the other one is using reinforcement learning, which uh, allows us to tackle more general Hamiltonian as some advantages that uh, I did not discuss here, which are transferable uh, that it can be transferred to larger systems, but we still have a lot of questions on uh, the reinforcement learning on how the reinforcement learning work in this uh, for this kind of task so one issue is the problem of measurements so would like to reduce the number of measurements and uh, this we have in part a partially addressed this with uh, the ability to transfer the policy to larger system uh, another uh, uh, issue is robustness to noise, and uh, the next issue will be to characterize the type of solution we obtain now, because it's not clear what kind of strategy the solution are, uh, are following, because uh, we, in, the, in the previous case we did not see like any slowing down close to the vanishing gap that were, which we were expecting before. So that will be all, and uh, thank you for the attention. And if you have any question, please. Uh, thank you, Glenn, and thank you for the nice talk, and also for sticking to the time that was allocated. So now I guess the floor is open for anyone who may have a question. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask any question you may have to, to Glenn. Good afternoon. Yes. I, I, yes. I, I, I have a question for, for Enoch, the previous uh, yes. speaker. Can you, speaker. Can, you wait, uh, can you wait until we get to the discussion? Okay. Then okay. the floor okay. will be okay. open. Okay. Right okay. now, it's okay. mainly for Glenn. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a, just a, a clarification question so Glenn, sorry, I, I mean I, i'm of course completely out of the field but so the the, the fully connected um spin model that you showed yeah that uh, is uh the transverse ising model but with uh all all spins interacting each other yes that's it so it's the same thing okay yes yes so yes so Yes, and, so we and, look at and, that model. And so, and so the, uh -huh. what, so what's the, what's the, what's the challenge in, uh, in doing that versus the, uh, the transverse spin model? So, uh, so it, it's, uh, first of all, the, one of the, the first challenge. So when realizing an experiment will be the fact that uh, one needs to couple uh, spins which are far from each other. But this is not the challenge we are tackling now. So the challenge we are tackling now when realizing this kind of, when studying this kind of problem, it's uh, that uh, for the, it, it will seem that uh, in this uh, problem with long range interaction, the landscape is uh, too rough and the uh, iterative optimization fails to provide uh, a good solution. So that was a testing ground to see whether uh, by, uh, uh, by uh, replacing the iterative optimization with a more sophisticated algorithm. In this case, we use reinforcement learning. We were still able to find the solution we're interested in. So we also looked at other different uh, models, so also with disorder, but uh, here I wanted to present a model where one of where the iterative uh, optimization was failing and the reinforcement learning was working. Usually when the iterative optimization works, the reinforcement learning will also reproduce the solution. But sometimes I see. One, okay. the other, we cannot use the iterative optimization. I have a, I have a if I can, Steve, um, uh, a curiosity about the, uh, the reinforcement learning. Um, is there an um, explicit uh, length scale uh, um, learning that goes on in, into the reinforcement learning or is this 
is that something that's automatically built in? So, you know, if you have, uh, let's say you have a, a system with correlations on different length scales. Yes. Um, is this something that uh, is automatically built into the reinforcement learning? So somehow the reinforcement learning has access to the, the expectation value of the two Hamiltonian, Hx and Hz. So mm -hmm. in the case, uh, let's see, in the case, if I can maybe, oh, it is complicated. So in the case of the fully connected spin model, it will have access to Hz, which uh, comprehends correlation between spin which are far from each other, okay? So I see. information I about see. correlation is passed to the agent via the expectation value of Hz. Uh-huh, okay. Okay, okay. And I guess that's that's very important for the yes for the yes. learning. Okay. Yes. I see. I see, I see. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay. So I think you can uh, stop sharing your slides and we can start um, our discussion with